Yes. <laughs> okay, this is a, a brief talk about uh, something I learned a while ago. Uh, I was writing this parser of a format that is pretty simple. I would say JSON-like. It has lists, dictionaries, strings, and integers. Uh, and uh, over time, I have ended up implementing this three times. And I'm going to start with my punchline. This, this is the performance of them in order of implementation. Uh, and I'm going to briefly go through the two top ones, but uh, the, the, the new uh, is going to be the main topic. <coughs> so the first sort of naive parser, uh, I parsed these types into vectors, maps, std strings, and insect tour. Uh, which, you know, as you can imagine, it kind of looks like this. You have a map, you know, it contains a string and a vector, and you know, so that, that example would sort of end up like that. Um, so when looking at the CPU profile of, uh, of where we spent all the time, it ended up being in basically heap allocation of building strings. I ended up having a lot of long strings in, in, my, sort of in, this, uh, in my workload, uh, but basically, heap allocations were the bottleneck. So the next, my next attempt, I thought, what if I keep the vectors and the maps, but I never allocate the strings. I just make them sort of lazy and point back into the original buffer that I was parsing. You know, this adds a few more constraints, uh, but it looks sort of like this. You have the map, contains the string and the vector, but the string now is not the std string. It just points to the string in the original buffer. And likewise, with the, the int and the strings, they just point back into the original buffer. You still have the map and the vector, so there's some uh, allocations going on. Uh, it's an order of magnitude faster, uh, and it has this additional requirement of you, needing to, you need to keep the buffer around. Um, but it still spent most of its time uh, in heap allocation. So the new parser is inspired by, or was inspired when I wrote uh, by a JSON parser called Jasmine, uh, which is an interesting, uh, it's, it's very similar to, to what I'm about to describe. Uh, the idea is to flatten the, this tree into a single array of tokens. Uh, and each item or token points directly into its content, similar to the previous version, uh, but also points to the next item so that you can create a tree structure. Uh, so it ends up looking something like this. You have the single array at the bottom. You start with a dict, sort of pointing to the start, uh, start opening brace there. And then you have a string, uh, because a dictionary has string keys and then the value. The value in this case is a list. Uh, and so the, the top pointers are pointing to the content. And the bottom pointers are pointing to the next item. So uh, the string in the list, right? That's, that's the single item in the dictionary. And there is no other item after the list. So if you follow that, you get to a token that's just indicating the end. Similar to the dictionary, uh, there's an end for the dictionary. Uh, and then you have also an end for the buffer. So this lets you uh, traverse this tree structure after you've parsed it uh, easily. So each token looks sort of something like this. You have the offset into the, the buffer. You have the type and an enum of different types of tokens. Uh, you have the next item, so that's sort of the, the pointer. Uh, instead of using pointers, I use integers, because then you know, pointers are eight bytes. Indices are, can be made four bytes. I don't need to parse more than four gigabytes. Uh, and the header is, uh, I'll get to the header. Um, so, but this has the obvious limitation. Uh, you can only parse four gigabytes of input. Uh, and uh, the header is sort of the length prefix for strings so that uh, you don't have to reparse the length, the length prefix. You can sort of get to the, the string data immediately. Uh, the next optimization you can make from this is to change around the members a little bit. Uh, if you make them bit fields, you can use 29 bits for, for the offsets. And you have three bits left over for the type. We've had five different kinds of types, so three bits is plenty. Uh, similar for next item is an index. You can use 29 bits. 
header, three bits, also plenty. Then you have eight bytes per, uh, per token, per, per item in this array. Very small, very fast. Uh, so this obviously limits you to, you can now only parse 512 megabyte uh, buffers, which in my case is fine. Uh, right, and eight, eight different types is uh, more than enough. Uh, and for the string prefix, uh, for various reasons, this ends up being, uh, you know, pretty long strings, sufficiently long. Uh, so you have some additional constraints with this setup. It means that when you do a dictionary lookup, you now need to do a linear search through your, string, uh, through your keys, uh, which in my use case is fine. Uh, it also means um, that lists are not random access. You have to iterate through the list for, uh, starting at the beginning, uh, going through them to the end. Uh, and this implementation is approximately another order of magnitude faster. Uh, here's those timings zoomed in a little bit. Uh, and uh, that's all I have. I also want to mention that this, this parser was featured uh, in Paul Drake's uh, talk, when was this? A few years ago, I think. Uh, fuzzing it. That's all I have. Thank you. Any questions? So what, what's the overhead for the, the bit deals? I mean, you have, you have smaller items that are a little bit more cash friendly, but there must be some cost of uh, decomposing it and using it. Uh, yeah, I haven't measured that. I wouldn't expect that to be significant compared to the cash friendliness. Yes. Where oh. do you need it? Uh, <laughs> people have a lot of them sometimes. The yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, would that work if you have like more uh, random access searches? Like, oh, I want to access, like, you know, like, like a dumb parser or something, and like then you want to you want to arbitrarily access some place in the tree, or would you rather use that only if you kind of using it as you're parsing it? Yeah. So right. It, so you have these constraints, right? And. Uh, you probably don't want to use this, if you parse it once and then you're going to access it millions of times, right, then you probably need to think about how to have a m more efficient data structure. Uh, in my use case, I mostly parse it and then I uh, scan through it and like pick out things that I need uh, or like refer back into it to, to sort of save, uh, save references into it. Yes? Yes. Uh, it makes it a bit field, so it means that it's that many bits, and then three bits. You know. The risk with it is if you ever uh, use this like in a network packet or something, the order of them is a little bit arbitrary. Typically, it depends on the endianness of the machine. But yes. Good. Uh, do you do this with one single heap amputation? I feel like it should be possible to do two scans in the stream. Uh, good question. Uh, I don't do that. Uh, so the observation was that you could scan through the input buffer first and then to count the number of tokens and then allocate them once and then uh, do the parsing. Um, yeah, I, I use a std vector, so it, it goes, like, it's e efficient enough. There's space for more shrinkage. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, yes. Sorry. The Did all lead to the same ASD abstract syntax tree after you pass this thing to JSON? So after, after I pass it, uh, right, everything points back into the original buffer. Like, so you have to keep that buffer around. And it's, it's technically not even pointers, it's indices into it. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if I understand. JSON, JSON tree, JSON. Oh, yes, right. The, the tree is sort of implied by these next pointers. So uh, uh, the, the list here, there could be another. Uh, so it, within the list, like the next, the next pointer is just the next item in the list. Uh, but there could have been another key, for instance, 
uh, in the dictionary, then there would have been another string here and then some value. Uh, so you still get the tree structure, but implied through the sort of next pointers. Yes. Do you consider, um, this might also be an ignorant question, but um, I'm going to go for it. Uh, do you consider using a struct fit field um, uh, risky? I remember the recent reading threads uh, on Stack Overflow that there's no guarantee uh, that the, the, the way in which memory stored with these struct fit fields is implementation specific for a, um, a compiler. Um, is that anything? Right, so is it risky? to use bit fields because uh, different implementations, that there might be poor implementations on them basically, or is that, you're saying some compilers might not have a very good implementation of bit right. fields basically, right? Uh, uh, I haven't really paid any attention to that. I think that all of the compilers that I care about have good implementations, and if someone were to file a report that it doesn't work for them, maybe I'll change it. Yeah. Yes. Cache what? Cache uh, so it's it. This is very cache friendly while parsing, uh, because you just extend it basically uh, forward uh, while you're traversing the tree. I think it's hard to do anything about like the. I haven't I haven't come up with one of these. Right, so the, the, the parser itself has a stack of the token that it's currently parsing, so then when it pops the back down again, it uh, patches up the previous token. Okay, okay. thank you.